we are seeing an issue in both the education of and action taken on the unsustainability of food consumption. Globally, the food system accounts for 30% of all greenhouse gas emissions around the world, and the UK is failing to challenge this problem. The UK imports almost half of the food it consumes each year. Simultaneously, the UK education sector is being critiqued about the lack of a climate change curriculum across schools. These future generations are the most vulnerable to the results of climate-related decisions that are being made now, and without their ability to respond or challenge these systems, school children in the UK face an injustice. We researched responses to this issue and found, scattered across Norfolk in 30 secondary schools, the Papillon Project. The Papillon Project is an educational, sustainable charity that's mission is to support secondary schools in providing opportunities for learning about sustainability through the creation and sustainment of a school allotment. This is their transformative programme, which lies at the centre of the Papillon Project. The main focus of this programme is involving the children in every step of both building and maintaining the allotment. My name is Matt Willett and I am the founder of the charity The Papillon Project. Essentially what we do as a charity is we are invited into schools and we create school allotments. Importantly we create the project with the young people themselves so they get a degree of ownership but they're also learning very valuable life skills. Alongside building allotments, the project also runs smaller programmes, such as the Noticing Nature programme, that further contributes to the wider goal of the project, to advocate and promote a more sustainable and ethical world for all human beings to live in harmony with and not against nature. How is the Papillon Project a transformation to sustainability? The Papillon Project is a locally based initiative that is citizen-led. It utilises a bottom-up approach to redistribute the power to the citizens and decentralise the food system. The project specifically focuses on redistributing power to school children by creating a new approach to how the current education system is teaching climate change. It does this by addressing the perception and relationship that children have with food. By enabling young people to develop hands-on experience with growing food, they are able to understand both where their food comes from as well as the role they play in climate change. School children also become empowered to respond to the climate crisis through the growing of their own food. Simultaneously, this avoids the harmful processes that take place within the global food system, weakening its power and contributing to the transformation of the UK food system. So I really think the future has got to be in growing food locally to where we live and work. This transformation is reliant on the replicability of the project elsewhere. We found that the Papillon project is easily replicable because the idea of creating a school allotment and an allotmenting curriculum could be implemented into most schools in the UK. How is the Papillon project a just transformation to sustainability? The new and future generations are those vulnerable to the result of unsustainable actions and decisions being made now. The absence of a climate change curriculum means school children in the UK are unable to determine their own future, creating an injustice. The education system perhaps needs to put significantly more emphasis on uh, re re rehearsing, not just, just rehearsing, which means just giving them the facts that they need, but also inspiring them. We believe that the project's effort to change the education system to one that includes information on sustainability tackles this injustice. In particular, these areas are examples of how the project is just. Firstly, the use of upcycle materials in the transformative programme. Many of the allotments we're privileged to create are made from upcycled materials like pallets here. So young people will see things like that and think, I can do that too. So that, that empowers them to think, yeah, yeah, I, re I really can do that. The whole point is to show young people that you don't have to spend thousands of pounds to do this. This places an emphasis on the accessibility and affordability of allotmenting. The YES Award is an award given to students that have made a considerable effort to influence the sustainability of their school. This encourages children to feel empowered to take action into their own hands and recognise their newfound voice. The Learning About Agriculture programme provides school children with access to information about animal agriculture. This empowers children by giving them further information about different types of food production. Through these programmes, the Papillon Project has helped to remove the discrimination that was being placed on the future generation and allows for the inclusion of vulnerable people in this transformation to sustainability. Limitation. Firstly, due to the charity being volunteer run, its work is limited by the capacity and accessibility of volunteers. This limitation would also apply to other projects that replicate this one. 
Secondly, it is essential that the project be replicated throughout the UK for transformation to occur, though this has yet to be demonstrated outside of Norfolk. Thirdly, throughout our research, we were concerned about the issue of land access in the UK as the majority of land is private. Furthermore, once children leave secondary school, they will no longer have access to the school allotment. This is particularly a concern for children from poor backgrounds, where access to land and resources is less likely. If this is not considered enough, then this marginalised group could be overlooked despite the project emphasising affordability. Therefore, we suggest a revision of this and a potential partnering with projects such as the Right to Roam, which aim to combat the privatisation of land in the UK. It would be nice if schools became the most important place in society where the next generation are learning the most important things.